The animation modifier can be applied to any Swift UI binding, which causes the value to animate between its current and new value. This even works if the data in question doesn't really sound like it can be animated, like a Boolean. That is, you can mentally imagine animating from 1.0 to 2.0. We go to 1.05, 1.1, 1.15, and so on. But going from false to true sounds like there's no room for in-between values. This is best explained with some working code to look at. So here's a view with a VStack, a stepper, and a button. At state, private var animation amount, CG float equals one. VStack, stepper scale amount, value, dollar animation amount, dot animation, in one through 10. Then a spacer, then button tap me, self dot animation amount plus equals one dot padding 40 dot background color dot red dot foreground color dot white dot clip shape circle dot scale effect animation amount that uses a simplified stepper initializer that works great if you only want a text title much the same way as button has a simplified text initializer too as you can see, the stepper can move animation amount up and down, and tapping the button will add one to it. They're both tied to the same data, which in turn causes the size of the button to change. However, tapping the button changes animation count immediately, so the button will just jump up to its larger size. In contrast, the stepper is bound to animation amount dot animation, which means SwiftUI will automatically animate its changes. Now, as an experiment, I'd like you to change the start of the body to this. Print, animation amount, and then return vstack. Because we have some non view code in there now, we need to add return before the vstack so Swift understands which part is the view that's being sent back. But adding print animation amount is important. And to see why, I'd like you to run the app again and try changing the stepper. What you should see is that it prints out 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and so on. At the same time, the button is scaling up or down smoothly. It doesn't just jump straight to scale two, three, and four. What's actually happening here is that SwiftUI is examining the state of our view before the binding changes, examining the target state of our views after the binding changes, then applying an animation to get from point A to point B. This is why we can animate a Boolean changing. Swift isn't somehow inventing new values between false and true, but just animating the view changes that occur as a result of the change. These binding animations use the same animation modifier that we use on views. So you can go to town with animation modifiers if you want to. Animation dot ease in out duration one dot repeat count three auto reverses true. These binding animations effectively turn the tables on implicit animations. Rather than setting the animation on a view and implicitly animating it with a state change, we now set nothing on the view and explicitly animate it with a state change. In the former, the state change has no idea it'll trigger an animation. And in the latter, the view has no idea it'll be animated. Both work and both are important.